What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert, and today what I wanted to do is have a quick look at version 3.2.2, which is a new update that we got as of yesterday. So I've got the release notes opened up in the background here, and if you haven't already checked these out, I'd encourage you to do so. We've got a number of fixes, and we've also got some improvements. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a look at a couple improvements that I feel are really, really, you know, solid improvements that are going to help people's workflow. I'm not going to go over everything, so I'm just going to go over a select few over here. So let's hop back into Studio One. Okay, so the first thing that I want to look at here is the way that Studio One version 3.2.2 deals with event effects. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key, and let's just drag a couple different plugins onto this event. So now, as you can see, we've got two different plugins on this event, and traditionally, if we wanted to open event effects, if we we're working in Studio One, if you didn't have the inspector open, um, you'd have to open the inspector, and then we go down to this tab over here, drop down menu, and then we could pull this down, and then I could open up any event effect that I had by just double clicking here. And then of course we could scroll through the different tabs here. But now, as of version 3.2.2, we've got a nice shortcut. Well, actually, we've got two different shortcuts. First one is simply by clicking Option or Alt F, that's going to open up the event effects window. And then you can choose which, which plugin, which, which tab of the plugin that you want to focus on. And the nice thing about that is even if you have your event window, sorry, your inspector window closed, very easy to open up the event effects per event. Now, if you're the type of person that would rather not use shortcuts, then we also have another option to get to the event effects. If you go down to this little section in the very bottom left here, you'll notice we can click here and I can choose the event effect that I want to open up. So we've got this little drop down menu. And of course, if you had five different plugins on this event, you'd be able to choose which focus you want to bring up with the plugin window. So that's very, very handy now. So we can now open up the event effects and, uh, you know, very useful. Okay, so another thing that I want to have a look at over here is let's just, uh, let's just take this over here. I'm going to create a new event and let's split it. We'll do this and we're going to create a crossfade. So we have a new behavior in 3.2 as to how we can edit our crossfades. Now, in previous versions, if you wanted to, you know, adjust the fades here, if you grabbed one of the fade handles and you pulled it either in or out, it would move both of them together. Now, sometimes that works fine, and then you could, you know, readjust the positions here and it would kind of auto update. And then if you wanted to, you know, reset everything, you could just click the X to reset it. But sometimes you would want to adjust the fade handles, you know, individually as opposed to adjusting them together. So what I mean by that is, let's say that I wanted to have a different fade in type or a different fade in curve. So now in version 3.2, if we hold down the Alt or Option key while we you know, position our mouse over a handle, I can now adjust this individually. So I can take this one over here, and you'll notice based on the event that we have selected, we've got a different drag handle here. So this would adjust the curve here. Sorry, if I'd have to hold down Alt. Now I can adjust the curve on the end event. If I click this one, and I wanted to create an entirely different fade type, I can do so just by clicking these different fade handles. So it's really, really handy. You can you know adjust the different curves. And then of course, once they're adjusted, you could make a selection of both of these over here, and then we could adjust these guys together once we've kind of got that once we've got our curves set the way we want to. So that can come in handy when you're editing, you know, whether it's dialogue, voiceover, music, anything like that. Handy feature to have. Okay, so the next one I want to have a look at here, let's just take everything and delete this on this track here, and I'm going to go zoom into a loop selection over here. I want to have a look at a new option that we have available for expanding layers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my preferences. You'll see in editing under advanced tab here in the preferences, we now have this option. So what this means, it's basically self-explanatory. If we have this checked off, then as soon as we're done uh, any looped recording, it's automatically going to expand, which is a previous behavior that we're all used to. But if we take this off and we deselect this, let's click apply. What I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna go ahead and just engage um, some recording over here. So I've got this track, I'm gonna set this up. I've got my volume pulled down so that I don't hear anything. So let's just go ahead and engage our loop, bring back to the top and let's go ahead, take one. This would be take two. This would be take three and this would be take four. Okay, so I've pushed stop, but you notice it didn't auto expand. Now for me, this is really handy because I'm usually very picky about my zoom window and what I'm looking at in terms of a vertical zoom. And I have my expand layers. I have that mapped out to a keyboard shortcut, which is option or alt C on my system. So I can very quickly expand my layers to see everything that I wanna see after I record. And if you're doing something like drums where you've got eight tracks and you're doing a loop recording, automatically it's gonna expand the layers and you're gonna lose your screen real estate. So if you prefer to work in a way that it doesn't automatically do that, that's now a new option that we have available over here. Uh, like I said, personally for me, I'll be leaving that unchecked from now on and I'm pretty happy to see that that came. Okay, now let's have a look at some of these ones over here. Okay, so I wanna look at bus channel metering shown on automation tracks and view all channel types in the inspector here. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, quite simply, if I take these two tracks over here, I've got a shortcut to create a bus automatically, and I bring these into view, you'll notice here, now when I select this track, which technically by Studio One terms is an automation track, you'll notice that I have all of my track controls that we had on our audio track. So that means I can access the inserts and I can also access the sends. And this is available now on this automation track, which is technically speaking is the volume automation envelope of this bus track. So now in the arrange window, we've got a better parity. And not only that, if you'd rather work with your mixer closed, and you want it to work like this, and you know, you're know you the type of user that likes to use the inspector to do, you know, your add your plugins, add your sends, and uh, you know, adjust your fader. You don't even have to have the mixer open because we now have this option available for our bus tracks or, or our effects tracks. Okay, so actually moving on to something else now, let's bring our mixer back for a second, and let me just open this up a little bit so we can see our sends. I want to have a look at another new option we have, which let's just go back to the release notes for a second. Use alt modifier to add effects plugin as a bus channel when dragging to console. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, this is pretty simple. Uh, some of you who've been following the blog for a while may have remembered. I did a video a while back about a workaround when you wanted to do something like taking a delay plugin and you wanted to send your delay out to a reverb. So with the current implementation of effects tracks in Studio One, we technically can't send from an effects track. Now, for most things, this isn't a big deal, but if you ever want to send you know, your effects return to another effect, that might pose a problem. So now, as of version 3.2, what we have is we have the ability to do a drag and drop by holding down the Alt key, when we do that drag and drop, you'll notice here, if I start to pull this in, it says add effects channel. And I would add it in here, but watch what happens when I hold down the Alt or Option key. It changes to a bus channel. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna let go. So now we've created a bus channel as opposed to an effects track. But you can see that it's taken on the name of the plugin that I dragged in, and it acts the same way the same implementation as doing a drag and drop into a send, creating an effects track. But now we have the added benefit that we can send. So if this was happened to be a delay, I could easily take this delay and send this out to a reverb. So I'm happy to see that as well. Now, the last thing I wanna look at here, and I'm actually going to be doing um, a video on this specifically, is I wanted to have a look at the new presence editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to go to instruments and let's just go ahead and let's take an instance of presence. We're gonna drag this over. So you can see I've purchased this add-on here. So now what I have here is I have the ability to open up an editor, which gives us a ton of different options. And this is really, really powerful. This is kind of like, in my opinion, this is a cross somewhere between uh, EXS24 and Contact. It's a lot more options than EXS24. 
and not quite as many as contact, but you still have a ton of options because we actually have a scripting engine as well that we can run. And then we have, you know, our editor, we've got our grid view, our list view, we can edit the samples, um, you know, we can create different groups. We have tons of different options in terms of round robin. Uh, you can package these, you can, you can create your own presence XT libraries that you can, you know, package into sound sets and share with your friends or colleagues. So this is something I'm going to be diving into in a little bit, but you know, this is a pretty powerful new feature to be able to have within presence XT, because this is going to open up a whole, you know, whole bunch of possibilities for people who are interested in creating their own sample libraries. Anyways, so that's a quick overview of, you know, some of the new features in 3.2.2 that I find are really, really useful. So I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.